Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another podcast episode of the In Transit podcast, brought to you by absolutely no one but myself, host Nerfad Nadarevich at the moment. When we do have sponsorships, we will make sure to let that know. But uh, for now, there is nobody but myself. So brought to you by myself. In today's episode, we will be talking in uh, regards to oversized shipping or overweight shipping, particularly speaking to the container shipping and ocean shipping and what you can do to kind of consider what is the best step forward as a shipper in in such regards. Um, you know, sometimes certain things are said to beneficial cargo owners that is not exactly accurate. Uh, just because a shipping a steamship line is in the in the you know business to make money um, and uh, to bring in as much volume as possible rather than to save money um, from an overall perspective so with that being said today's episode eight is about steamship lines and overweight shipping containers and um, so let's get going so essentially a steamship line or even a local freight forwarder will tell you that you must limit your container weight to 44,000 pounds or even less to remain within legal limits. The problem with that is most dense freight won't fill an actual 40 foot container at that weight. So the actual limit on an ocean container weight, weight is the maximum gross cargo weight listed on the container door. Typically, it's about 10,000 pounds or more uh, beyond that 44,000 pounds as mentioned. Uh, the so-called legal limitation pertains to the land side where in the U.S., uh, the truck weight limits by state restrict the total weight of truck plus the contents to about 80,000 pounds. So using a standard tractor and trailer, carriers can easily handle 44,000 pounds plus their truck and uh, still be legal on the roads. But the idea that heavy freight shippers must ship partial container loads to stay legal is not correct. Solutions exist actually out there to help you maximize the container payload and you can still legally transport this excess weight um, or these heavy, heavy set containers over the road in the USA and Canada respectively. Go Canada! Um, the shippers who abide by the steamship line's guidance um, and as a result fall far short of the maximum container payload on every shipment um, and they could uh, end up shipping 25% or so more containers a year than they actually need to ship. Uh, for your dense cargo, the key to unlocking a, you know, a, a hefty savings opportunity in heavy freight shipping is not only on the ocean but on having the ground side or the land side trucking carriers to legally haul containers that are 55,000 pounds or more. And this is obviously well over the limit stated by the steamship lines when you talk to them and many freight forwarders too because they're looking at volume, right? So why do why do they provide this kind of, you know, ill-advised guidance on shipping um, goods um, past a certain weight. Well, as mentioned, it's really because they want to ship volume and it's in their best interest, right? So they're in the b business of moving large volumes of containers in a way that works most effectively for them specifically, right? So there are global, you know, solutions that they advertise as door to door. It's primarily designed around consumer goods, which account for the vast majority of the ocean freight. Um, delivering heavyweight containers door to door requires relationships with, you know, pretty special trucking companies or specialized trucking companies. Um, and actually on both sides, so the import side and the, the export side and the import side um, that have, you know, these carriers have to have the right equipment and, and the you know, single trip permits required or even blanket permits required to legally handle this work. Um, the extra time and effort involved in creating these, you know, pretty, you know, pretty good relationships to have um, kind of decreases the efficiency of the ocean carrier. So they just set this limit at, you know what, it's 44,000 pounds and uh, there you have it, you know. 
And that's why, you know, for heavy freight, they, they limit these container weights. Um, so they, they can easily handle this road transportation with their, you know, standard carriers that are being used. Um, or they might accept, you know, the heavier container, but terminate service at the port of arrival, um, leaving the, you know, the, the beneficial cargo owner or the shipper to arrange the, the delivery to either a warehouse or, you know, the final mile, wherever that may be. The final, may, the final, final mile may be actually at the warehouse itself, um, you know, so you're, you're left as a beneficial cargo owner to kind of decide this for yourself. You know, it's again, it's in their best interest, right? So what shippers don't really realize is, you know, the, the rules governing the over the road moves of these heavyweight, you know, freight goods are not, you know, strong and hard and fast, right? So some states do allow carriers to haul 10,000 pounds or more over the maximum 80,000 pounds uh, road weight limit. Um, but it's provided that the weight is, you know, properly distributed in the container and that they have the overweight permits required for the legal transit of this weight. So when you're looking at it, you know, each state has their own kind of way of dealing with freight weight limits on heavy loads. And so that kind of varies, right? So depending on where your shipments are going in the U.S. or Canada, respectively, you can, you know, probably load more products in every container that you're shipping out. Um, so for example, like, you know, for for a 40-footer, you know, if you're going to the states of New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, um, the routing is usually through New Jersey um, or New York. And so with that routing in mind, for a 40 footer, you're looking at a, you know, max, max weight um, of, you know, 55,115 pounds or roughly 25,000 kilograms. Um, whereas in like Canada, for example, in Ontario, that you'd, you'd most likely be going through the Montreal CY. And, um, you know, that payload for a 40 footer would be like, you know, 55,115 pounds or 25,000 kilograms. Um, there's differences in states too. Like, you know, like uh, you have uh, Florida. Florida, if you go through the routing, would be Miami. And uh, it would be, you know, 59,000 pounds or 26,762 kilograms. Um, you know, Northern California, Nevada, you'd, you'd be going through like Oakland. Um, and um, it would be, you know, 47,000 pounds or 21,319 kilograms. So definitely more than 44,000. So you can definitely ship more product than they may tell you that you can, right? And um, when you look at it, you know, how much could you potentially uh, save if you kind of just ignore or not, you know, don't take their ill-advised or, or misguided advice? Um, it can add about, you know, approximately 10,000 pounds to every container you ship. So, the you know, the cost of a fully loaded versus partially loaded uh, container shipment will be, um, you know, you, you will simply ship about 25% 25, 25 fewer containers, assuming you can max out your payload for each shipment. And that's really where your savings come from. So you'll pay more for that, you know, specialized trucking equipment required for these non-standard drayage hauls. Um, but that added cost is typically more than offset by reductions in the ocean freight spend because you're shipping less containers overseas. So, you know, does it does it really like people ask, like, does it actually like always work this way? Like, are you always going to save? So the short answer would be not necessarily Obviously, there's rules to the game at times, so it'll really depend on the local trucking rates, the current economy that we're in, um, what the distance traveled is, you know, how much more weight can actually be loaded into the container. Um, but for high volumes and heavy cargo shipping, it's definitely the strategy that, that, that can get you, you know, a, a, a high yield, so to speak, definitely, definitely a high yield in savings. And so definitely something to look into, um, you know, moving forward. Um, you know, for example, um, if, 
you know, there's this one tea importer and they, you know, they're shipping, you know, 40 foot containers at a container yard to door. And the rate is twenty nine ninety per container with the steamship line. And the company was limited to a maximum payload of 19,400 kilograms per container. So the shipping cost was roughly $154 per metric ton. Um, if they work with a freight forwarder that understands this, that are very good at heavy freight special specialties and good at shipping overweight containers, th the company can then increase that T that T importer can increase its payload uh, to 24,493 kilograms per container uh, by using its own door delivery solution from the port. And so while it's, you know, containers yard to door cost increased from 2900, 2990 to 3425 due to the U.S. trucking charge, it did actually, when you're looking at it like yearly, it actually reduced its per ton cost to $14 uh, per metric ton by shipping more cargo per container. So they went from 154 Met, uh, per metric ton to down to you know <laughs> fourteen dollars right so that's an example of of saving a lot of money and so based off of what their volume was of you know thirty forty foot thirty uh containers that are forty feet in length per month and the payloads around twenty four thousand five hundred kilograms or just a couple kilograms less than that. That importer actually saved approximately ten thousand five hundred dollars per month, or one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars per year, just in that example alone. And there's thousands of these examples. You can go through case study after case study after case study of how this actually can bring savings to your bottom line. Um, so definitely something to take a look look into if you're interested in. You know, if you have freight that you need to ship um, to the USA or Canada, um, you know, increase the, the total payload that you're bringing over per container and you're going to be saving on your bottom line, um, especially for the, tr the transportation, the freight spend. Right. So, again, even though the land side, the, the, the rate will increase you are still saving because you're shipping a lot less containers. So it's. All I'm saying is take a look at it and you can definitely that can definitely be a tool for you to to help your company out. So, you know, as mentioned, um, you know, the overweight container strategy can be an effective uh way for shippers of, you know, industrial freight like bricks, metal, forgings, casting, stone, and I mentioned like tea importer as well, you know. That can definitely be an effective way to to save um, industrial shippers that go from working direct with the steamship line to a freight forwarder um, that specializes in heavy freight shipping access, um, they they actually, as a shipper, access another level of you know tailored solutions, tailored service, right? So the steamship lines are not really that well organized to cater to special situations, whereas a freight forwarder can provide custom, tailor fit suited personal advice and container loading plans even for your specific shipments and needs um, another group definitely that can benefit from the strategy are in essence the freight forwarding companies themselves who don't have the relationships with the specialized trucking companies in the u.s or canada to handle otr moves so many of these forwarders um, they kind of just go along with ocean carriers and limiting the container weight but if they partner with a true real freight broker who knows what they're doing and who has a true relationship and partnership network set up with heavy haul companies, um, you know, especially in the U.S. and Canada, then the, that freight forwarder even can arrange seamless, you know, unbelievable door to door ocean freight service with no need to transload, transload freight um, at certain locations um, or you're really showing your customer value by you're saying, hey, we're going to sh save you money by not having to ship an extra 25% of containers a year by, you know, providing you this service that's really tailored to your needs. 
and can give you what you're looking for. So again, you know, to capitalize on the strategy to maximize the container payload from door to door ocean shipments, um, you you definitely need to look at a few things. Um, one, you have to assess if your product is definitely good for uh, more efficient ocean shipping. Um, if your loads breach the weight limit before the containers are full, day in and day out, all the time when you're shipping, determine if it's you know first possible to load the container to max capacity. And then look at the financial impact of doing this. Um, one thing to consider so we don't get ahead of ourselves is that hazmat cargo is not eligible for overweight shipments over the road. So you have to definitely take that into consideration. Um, in addition to this, uh, you should work with carriers that have blanket permits from the DOT for hauling overweight loads. Uh, you definitely don't want to be in a situation where your container is sitting at the port or waiting for a carrier to apply for um, um, uh, or to get an approval on a permit for like a temporary permits. Uh, you want partners that have the permits in hand and can immediately move your product from the port to the consignee with no transload uh, requirements um, or no issues with the permit. So that's something you Definitely have to ask, ask your providers, do they have the partnerships and the network of blanketed permitted companies that can do this freight for you? Um, in addition to this, you should definitely look at uh, which state limits uh, impact uh, your shipments in terms of the overweight. So, you know, you got to look at... Um, you know, the administrative code for each state, the enforcement policy, uh, policies, um, you know, and look at what exemptions are given to what kind of a commodities um, and what the federal truck, and so truck size and weight limits are. And these exemptions often only apply to interstate highways, but that's not always the case. Uh, also, some exemptions um, or, you know, larger weights are allowed through specific permits. So, you definitely just want to confirm that your partner that you're working with has this down to a science. You also want to determine the proper weight distribution. So when you're maximizing that container payload, um, the margin for error shrinks as it relates to weight limits per axle. So therefore, you need to be especially diligent about keeping the weight evenly distributed across the entire container. The right logistics partner can definitely help you achieve this goal. Um, some will even create a load plan or um, for you for you to use while you're um, loading the container, essentially, um, at origin. And so you can definitely talk to your provider, see if this is a service they can provide for you. Um, in addition to this, you also don't want to ignore the packaging. So the way the heavy goods are packaged can definitely limit the container's payload. So for instance, if you're shipping a product in that's you know non-stackable crates, the height of the crate will dictate how much product you can load, right? So sometimes a small change in the packaging method or size can definitely reduce your per ton cost uh, for ocean freight. So that's really how that overweight sort of feel looks like in terms of um, shipping overseas. Um, some things just to keep in mind, as mentioned. So I would reach out to your partners and really get a grasp of what they can do for you. Um, I know a lot are willing to, you know, go to bat for their customers. Um, I practice this in my own practice. This is something that... I hold near and dear to my heart. I don't like to over promise and under deliver, um, nor do I practice that at all. Actually, um, if, if I'm going to do something, it's going to be done. So even at the detriment of my own cost. So I have to be calculated in my risk. I have to be calculated in my approach with customers. Um, if a customer reaches out and they want a rate, I'm not going to tell them, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's 9800 bucks or it's 3400 bucks. No, no, no. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to say, let me do some research. Let me look at the market. Let me look at the lane. Let me look at the commodity and what is involved. And then I will get back to you with a rate. 
And that's an approach that you want from your service providers as a BCO, as a shipper. Um, if you don't have that, service is definitely going to go down the drain. You're going to have missed appointments and missed calls. And, you know, this is not to, you know, to diminish competitors or anything. I'm, I'm you know, I'm pretty sure every company that's in it to make money has to do things the right way. Um, some are better than others, but that doesn't mean that, you know, um, we should just sit here and blame everybody else and saying everybody is awful and brutal. Um, everybody has a niche in this industry. Now, you may be thinking, you know, what about oversized freight? Like, you know, different challenges that people face. So similar to the overweight freight, um, it's not a problem to ship oversized freight via the ocean. Uh, special, there are specialized vessels and cargo containers types uh, that aid the process. Um, but the challenge comes on the land side or the ground side, um, on the importing side um, and the exporting side. Um, as these um, out of gauge or OOG shipments require careful planning um, to legally move them over the road, right? So because this, this is not especially of most steamship lines, they may hesitate to provide door to door quotes. Um, you know, if you you know, if you got a, a row row, a roll on roll off vessel, they are designed to carry wheeled cargo, um, like cars, trucks, semi trailer trucks, trailers, railroad cars, um, that are driven on and off the ship on their own wheels, um, or using a platform vehicle, um, like a self propelled modular transporter. Um, but that's a way you can transport things that are not necessarily on a pallet in a crate in a box sort of sort of thing right um, another way that oversized shipments are handled is by a flat rack or a platform container and they're suitable for heavy loads and cargo that needs loading from the top or sides so like machinery pipes um, or other bulky items of uh, flat racks are actually have collapsible walls at the end um, and the platform containers do not uh, you also have open top containers and hard top containers, and they're ideal for heavier cargo that needs to be loaded with an overhead crane. Uh, open tops are covered by a tarp, while hard tops have a removable metal roof that makes them more weather resistant. Both open top and hard top containers have end doors to give flexibility in container loading and discharging operations as well. And so people ask, well, what are these then requirements for the over-the-road or OTR shipping of oversized cargo? Um, so like the ocean transport side, there is specialized equipment and you have to know, you know, and there's know-how knowledge that's required to transport OOG cargo over the road and special rules that must be followed or shippers risk safety violations and other fines. Um, it helps to work with the partner experience in moving oversized loads. Um, and they all usually have a certain feel to them or a certain way that they go about their day or go about their, um, they go about their processes. Um, one of those things that all of them have, um, including freight brokers and asset side companies, asset based companies, is they do actually have a strong network of reliable specialty carriers within their own network. And these carriers should have special flatbed equipment, you know, your RGNs and low boys and, and blade trailers of the world um, that help move this OOG type of material, step decks, etc. cetera. Um, they also have knowledge of the state-by-state -state rules governing, you know, when and where uh, OOG cargo can move. So, like, for example, some states, they're, they'll tell you what time of day um, big, big oversized cargo can travel on the roads. Um, it's a way to limit risks and keep the public safe, really. Um, so that's why that's in place. Um, in addition to this, um, these partners of yours that you will use to move your OOG cargo, your oversized cargo that has just arrived from uh, overseas, for example, uh, will be 
that they have experience building route plans. And so oversized loads, they must avoid roads where low bridges or road widths make passage impossible. So planners must carefully plan the route uh, turn by turn. And, you know, they have to submit these plans to the Department of Transportation before the agency uh, will actually give you a permit. So you got to make sure that you're dealing with a reputable company in that sense or someone that is not going to even accept that tender until they cross their I's and dot their T's, so to speak. Um, and in addition to this, um, you also want to have, um, like in previous episodes that I've talked about, is really, if needed, again, if needed, um, escort service capability. And some states do require an escort for shipments that are more than 12 feet wide. So your you know, freight partner, your logistics partner should be able to get this going for you uh, if it is uh, something of need. Um, and in terms of, you know, the bottom line and uh, understanding of oversized shipments is that every single one is unique and it's based really on what's being moved um, the, and the, the equipment characteristics and the states that they move uh, through um, and provinces respectively, Go Canada Go!, um, there are no uh, blanket solutions to this, so each of these are high-risk moves, and they require careful understanding, knowledge, risk, evaluation, and advice. And you definitely want a proven partner um, that can advise you every step of the way when you're handling, especially if you're not familiar with the territory and you're not familiar with um, what is being provided And so that will be it for the ocean portion and the initial land portion of overweight and oversized shipping. We will have other episodes. Um, I want to try to keep these as short as possible, but to give you as much information as I can. Um, you can spend an eternity in logistics and learn something new every day. So most likely the next episode will be about... Um, detailed information regarding heavy haul oversized shipping overweight shipping and so we'll talk about that when the time is right uh, for now hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully this has been educational for you uh, if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down leave a comment let us know what you like what you didn't like and i will do my my best to improve every single episode as it goes along so God bless, um, keep it moving, keep it in transit, keep those check calls going, and respect everybody. Check it, I'm out. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another podcast episode of the In Transit Podcast.